Hi, welcome to Cloud9 Yoga. I'm Claudia and it's great to have you here with me today. I'm finding myself once again in Hush Horsham where I was teaching this particular flow this morning. If you enjoy it, I'm back here in two weeks time on Sunday. Check the schedule and I'll see you in person. Enjoy the flow. All you will need is a strap and two blocks. And the flow is about creative approach. So you will have some creative transitions throughout. And you'll also hear me share with you some of my um, reflections on how do you just pursue our goals? How do we reconnect with our aspirations? I really hope you will enjoy the class. Um, I'll see you on the mat, lying nice and flat on your back. See you there. For today's class, you might need a strap. If you don't have one handy, um, don't worry, you'll cope without it. And a block could also be quite helpful um, for your transition from the standing balance to half moon. So I'll put one just at the top of the mat to the right hand side as we'll start on the right leg. So just so it's ready there for me, should I need it. So let's lay down on our backs. And tra traditionally by now, Having the strap handy, take space with your feet as wide as the mat. Use a moment to use the shoulders and the back of the head to elongate your spine. Bring your hands to your ribs and just allow yourself to tune into your breath. If closing your eyes feels good, feel free to close your eyes. Relax your shoulders. And as you take your exhales, I want you to open your mouth and exhale everything out. Feel how those ribs are hugging like a corset at the bottom of the exhale pause. And take a silent inhale through your nose. Open your mouth and let it all out. Just really getting used to that full, full exhale. And I know you might feel like there's nothing left in you anymore, but there is still air in you, so let it all out. Pause. And inhale calmly through your nose. Last one like that. Just as if you're freeing colorful butterflies through your mouth, let them all out. Pause and inhale. Grab hold of your strap. We're going to start straight away with um, Hastapada and Gustasana series. So if you can bring your feet together, really together. Option one, to bring the left sole of the foot to the floor, right leg up to the sky. You can use your fingers holding onto your big toe. Your knee doesn't have to be straight, but what I want you to focus on is that the heel is directly kind of over the hip. So it's not somewhere there, it's not somewhere here, but it's kind of staying upright. If you have your strap, just put it on the sole of that right foot, holding onto each side of the strap in your hands. Create the action of that right heel pulling to the sky. So whether the leg is straight or not, it's irrelevant. The leg is working. Relax your shoulders. Take a moment in here, just really, really reaching through that right heel. Then grab hold of both of the straps in your right hand. Take the left hand to the top of the left hip and bring that right leg to the right. Now, in a way, I prefer it by using just my hand rather than the strap because I then know that that right leg is not going to go towards the kind of a left knee height. You want that right foot in line with the right hip. And this left hip wants to lift, so see if you can really ground it through that left hand. Wherever you are, with that right leg, create the action of wanting to come upright, but with the strap or the hand, hold it in place. Take a moment of this resistance and then using the muscles of the right leg alone, the inner muscles, bring that right leg up towards the sky one more time. Grab both of the straps in your left hand, elongate the left leg, take the right hand to a T and then take your right foot to the left. So that right hip will rise, but the right shoulder stays grounded. And again, that right foot wants to come down the height of that left knee. So do your best to keep it nice and high in line with the hip. Create the action of wanting to come upright with that right foot and with the hand, the left hand, hold it in place. Take one more moment, feel that outer leg muscles working and then using the leg muscles alone, bring it back up. Release the strap, bring the left foot to the floor, cross the right foot over the left, 
figure four stretch bring your hands behind your left thigh and take a moment in here finding a little creative approach into our lives learning that well-trodded paths as well as well-trodded moves put us on the autopilot and as much as it's good in some such situations some circumstances in others it allows us to be open to errors nice relax release the feet and let's try this on the other side so either with the strap or without grab hold of the big left toe take it up towards the ceiling now the right leg can go nice and long flat towards the floor or it can stay bent the left knee can be soft what I'm after is that the left heel is shooting to the stars. Hmm. Take a moment, relax your shoulders, feel how that foot wants to come down towards the floor, but the straps are holding it over that hip. And then grab hold of both straps in your left hand, right hand to the right hip, take the left foot to the left. And again, it really doesn't matter how low it goes. What matters is that you feel that connection to that left heel, that you feel that you're actually not just a paperweight, but you're a living, breathing being, and you're engaged, and you connect it. So with that foot, create the action of wanting to come up with the hand, keep it there. Feel that resistance, and then using the left leg muscles alone, bring it back up, swap the grasp of hands, take the left hand to a T, right leg to the floor, take the left leg to the side. Now for me, this is definitely my tighter side. I can definitely feel it more in my adductors and they are right now trying to really find an accommodation for me. So I'm gonna slightly lift it higher because in yoga, we don't work against the pain. Being with discomfort and learning to be with discomfort is one thing, but trying to push through pain is all together different. One more breath. Create an action of pulling up, create the action of pulling down with the hands. All right, come back up. Release the strap, put it to the side. I probably recommend you keeping it to the front. And now from here, cross that left foot over the right thigh, and lift the right foot off of the mat, interlace behind your right leg, and take a moment in here. Deep breath in, full breath out. Nice and easy. Lovely. Releasing the feet, bring both knees into your chest. Take a moment to squeeze them in and take a happy baby. Open your knees as wide as they go and grab hold of the soles of the feet from the inside and between the legs. Now opening the legs nice and wide in preparation for some hip work. Maybe work from side to side. Someone asked me once, what's your favorite yoga pose? And I thought, hard and long. And then I thought, actually, it's got to have to be. It just has to be. Happy baby. All right, bring your feet together and take them either, option one, knees over the hips, flex the toes, or lengthen the legs into a half boat. Rise up with your head and shoulders. Take your heart to the sky. Feel the core awakening. Or just let those hip flexors do some work if you're in full boat. If you are in full boat, see if you can lower down to half boat. And now everybody, let's come up into a full boat. And into a half boat. And one more time into a full boat. Cross the right over the left, bring the heels really close to your butt, roll over, downward facing dog. Breath in and breath out. From here, let's just walk our feet towards our hands. Baby steps, still warming up, still in that stage of just getting to know the body. When you get to the top of the mat, give me a halfway lift in here. As you exhale, soften and bow. Inhale all the way up into Tadasana. Reach your arms up, engage your quads and glutes and bring your hands to prayer. 
lovely. Standing at the top of the mat, bring your feet together, really together. And then give me a chair pose. Inhale. Take your sit bones back. Take your heart forward. Imagine your hands are pulling you upright and your legs really want to sit down. Find that kind of fierceness in this pose. Squeeze your legs together. Bring your hands to prayer. Shift your weight to the right foot. Bring the left knee to your chest and cross the left ankle over the right thigh. If you need to help yourself with your hands, do so. Now from here, I want you to focus on taking the sit bones back, the heart forward, while you're pressing the left knee down towards the ground. One more breath in here, really steady. Then use your left hand to grab hold of the left big toe. We don't have to straighten it. What we do have to do is hold on to it. So from here, as you breathe in, allow yourself to kick that foot to the side, rising up. Use your right hand for balance. Take that left foot to the side. Maybe straighten, maybe don't. Open that hip, flex the toes. From here, we're gonna to transition to half moon. One more breath in, press that right foot to the floor, find your drishti, and then letting go of that left foot, transition to half moon. Here's where your block could come handy. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. Shoot that left heel to the side. Turn the torso to the left side of the mat. Take one more breath here. And then as you exhale, soften the right leg. Step it back, warrior two. In your warrior two, press the back foot to the mat, press the front foot to the mat, maybe sink lower. In those well-known poses, what we tend to do is we tend to just arrive. So see if you can still manage your pose here. See if you can stay present. Bend that right elbow, bring it to the top of the right thigh side angle pose. Open the torso. I like to grab hold of that bottom rib with my top arm and rotate the torso more. From here, press that elbow into the thigh. Press the back foot to the floor. Blossom. Broaden the collarbones. One more breath, pressing the right foot firmly to the floor. Feel that right glute waking up. Take a lizard pose, both hands inside the right foot, pivot. Take that right foot further to the side and from your lizard pose, lower the back knee down. You can stay here or you can lower it to your forearms. Whatever it is you're doing, I just want you to stay present, broadening the collarbones. See if you can take the heart forward. Tuck the tailbone ever so slightly towards the front edge of the mat, rather than letting it flow to the back. Press the back foot into the floor, the top of the back foot into the floor, so much so that it feels as if that left knee wants to lift. Wonderful. Come back to your pass. Take half splits. As you take your hips back, soften that front knee. Dig that front heel down, pull it back isometrically. Meaning it doesn't actually move, but the back leg is connected. Or the back of the leg is connected. One more breath. Come back. Lizard. From here, we're going to go to the back end of the mat. So take that left foot to the right side of the mat. Take the left hand behind you. Open up gate pose or variation of a side plank. Push the left hand into the floor, push the hips forward. Take one more moment in here and then open the heart, rotate it slightly. Take the right toes towards the front of the mat. Open the heart, exhale, sit back down. You might need to adjust your feet, bringing the left foot to the inner right thigh. Reach the arms up, inhale, exhale, fold forward. Take a deep breath in here. Take the heart forward as you exhale, soften and bow. Just one more like that. 
and then gently walk yourself back upright. Let's take that left knee up to the sky. Turn the left toes slightly more to the left. Using your hands, or maybe not, lift up, Skandasana. If you need to change your feet, change your feet. Not one yoga pose is meant to happen with you not having to be present with it. One more breath. Maybe use that left hand to open that left hip more by bringing it to the floor. Reach the right arm up, opening the heart. Fantastic. Let's transition to goddess. Both heels in, toes up. Sit nice and low. Hands to prayer, take your torso slightly further back. Sit lower. We're gonna take care of those adductors and we're gonna passively stretch them out. So bring your elbows to your thighs. Bring your hands to your shins. Now from here, when you take the sit bones back, just like you did in that figure four stretch, take the heart forward and pressing the arms into the legs, legs will resist. One more breath. Beautiful. Straighten your legs, rise up. Five-pointed star. Pigeon toe your feet. Exhale, prasari to padottanasana. Nice. Wonderful. So you're facing the left side of the mat. You're allowing yourself to just relax. Shake your head yes or no. Shift the weight to the balls of the feet. Take your pubic bone back and up. If your head is touching the floor, narrow your stance. Now, keeping the feet exactly where they are, we need to come into halfway lift. Keeping the feet in those places, just rotate on the balls of the feet as you walk your hands to the top of the mat, all 10 toes to the top of the mat. Rotate your hands to the right side of the mat, all 10 toes to the right side of the mat. Sit down. Go mukhas on the legs. Now, if Gomukhasana is really uncomfortable, feel free to elongate the bottom leg. Simple. Otherwise, stay here. Knees on top of one another. Lengthen the heart. Bring the hands forward. And then lean over those legs, thinking to take the sit bones back and the heart forward. Pull on the hands to take the heart further forward rather than rounding the back. One more breath in here. Wonderful. From here, just come up. And as you come upright, let's take the sole of that right foot to the floor. Lift the left arm up towards the sky, hugging that knees close to your chest, twist. As you're twisting, you're facing the right side, the, I think you're facing the right side of the mat. That might be wrong. Broaden the collarbones, relax your shoulders away from the ears. Stay with that breath. Fantastic. From here, unravel. You're facing the wide edge of the mat, the right side of the mat. And now from here, what I want you to do is start turning all the way forward so you're facing the front edge of the mat. Bring that right foot still to the floor. Bring your hands like you would for Chaturanga. Now we're going to take a little cheated arm balance. What I want you to do is use the left elbow for the left hip and the right elbow for the right knee. All right, lift your hips up. Then bring the right knee to the right elbow. Lean forward, bend your elbows like you would for Chaturanga. Place that left hip on that left elbow. Maybe the feet will lift, maybe they won't. One more breath, wherever you are. Take your heart slightly forward. And then unraveling your legs, Step it back to Chaturanga. Open your heart and take a downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in, full breath out. Lovely. Let's try this on the other side. Carve line with your nose. Look forward. Bend your knees. Step, walk, or hop. Top of the mat. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, bow. Chair pose, inhale. Find that fiercefulness in here. Hands pull up, bum pulls down. Look at your toenails. 
Find those sit bones, taking the energy to the back. Shift your weight to the left, hands to prayer, figure four stretch. Nice. That left, right knee is pulling down, sit bones pulling back, and the heart is pulling forward. All this energy creating space in all the joints. With the right hand, grab hold of the right big toe. We're going to rise up. Whether you're straining that right leg or not, I don't mind. Take yourself into a standing one-legged balance. Maybe open that right leg to the right. Finding your balance from here, smile, and then transition to half moon. Let go of that right leg, stay nice and high. You can use your block, you don't have to. Wherever you are, if you tremble, if you fall, the mat will catch you. With that right heel, create the pull towards the back of the room. With the crown of the head, create that pull to the front of the room. Open the torso to the right side of the mat. Fantastic. Bend the right knee. Warrior two. Find your warrior. Zip your shoulders together. Really together. Press the feet down. Fantastic. Let's move from here to extended side angle. Forearm to thigh, left hand, right hand, left rib. Open up, take it to an extended side angle. Bend that front knee, push with the forearm. Find yourself still, trying to lift from the upper body, ground through the lower body. One more breath. As you exhale, lizard pose. As you come into your lizard, both hands to the inside of that left leg, lower the back knee. You can stay nice and high, just catching your breath. Stay with it. Or you can stay nice and low, lowering the elbows. Wherever you are, try to keep that foot firmly to the floor, not lifting the toes, not letting the knee collapse, just staying with it. In fact, that knee has that action of pulling towards the left, left shoulder. Then the left shoulder is pressing into that left knee. Fantastic, let's come to half splits. Walk your hips back and over that back leg. Take your toes with you. Soften the left knee, dig the heel down, pull back isometrically. Feel that back of the leg working. Maybe work towards straightening that knee. Lovely, come back, lizard. Take your right foot to the left side of the mat and walk all the way to a gate pose. Taking the right hand back, the left hand up. Lovely, one more breath, push the hips forward. Lengthen through the side body. And as you exhale, come into Stargazer, opening the heart more to the sky. So from here, we can comfortably sit back down on our bum. Bring the sole of the right foot to the inner left thigh. Lengthen the hands and heart to the sky and come into a forward fold. Heart forward and heart to the leg. Let's take one more breath here. Fantastic. Walk your hands back up. Now one more time focusing on that right leg. Bring the foot to the floor. Step it slightly to the outside, either using your hands or not. Rise up to Skandasana. Right hand to the floor, left hand opens up. That right hand is inside the right leg to create that greater opening. Let's transition into Goddess. One more time, same approach. We won't be complicating things. We're gonna sit nice and low. Knees directly over your ankles, going the same direction as your toes. Take your torso back first, and then forearms to thighs, hands to shins, hips lift, torso lowers. And as you send those sit bones back 
You should feel a lovely stretch through the inside of your legs. One more breath. Imagine you're like a tabletop. Nice. You can shimmy from side to side if that feels good. Rise up. Legs straighten. Arms reach up. Toes in. Heels out. Prasarita Padottanasana. Take a moment. If your head touches the floor, narrow your stance. Pubic bone goes back and up. Weight goes over to the balls of the feet. One more breath. Come back to halfway lift. One more time, just like we did earlier. From here, what I want you to do is walk your hands all the way to the top of the mat. Walk them back. Take your toes with you. Go Mukhasana. Lovely. What tends to happen here is we tend to pull the belly forward, take the shoulders back. So see if you can take the back of the ribs to the back of the room and then lower it down. Hands pull the heart, sit bones, aim back. One more breath in here. You know your alternative to cow face. If you need to take it, take it. Come back up. Take that left foot to the floor and then let's reach the right arm up. As you twist, you can bring the elbow outside or you can hug it in. You can also bring your hands to prayer, edging that elbow outside the leg. Wherever it is you are today, take a moment to just get to know, reconnect with your own body. Opening the hips getting into that fluid motion. Fantastic, unravel. And as you unravel, take the hands all the way to the top of the mat. Spread them nice and wide, fingers are wide. Think chaturanga, lift your hips up. Left knee, left elbow, right hip, right elbow. Plonk yourself in there. Then see if you can lean forward to lift the toes off of the mat. Wherever you are, if you're still trying to lift, smile. Now just step it back. Chaturanga. Open the heart. Downward facing dog. Breathe in and breathe out. Now let's take a little seat in child's pose or in hero pose. If you'd like to practice this floor one more time, I'd recommend you to take it with your breath. And I know you're like, I don't remember how it went. Don't blame you. <laughs> so if you do, however, just rewind it and just do it one more time. Otherwise, just stay with me in downward facing dog. And we're gonna move into pigeon. As if your hips haven't had enough opening already, let's lift the right leg, bend the knee, open the hip. <sighs> Fantastic. From here, bring the right knee to the right wrist. Open the hip and settle yourself down. Make sure that the right knee is outside the right hip and the right foot is more to the left side of the mat. Now you can stay here or you can come into a passive pigeon. Whatever is calling you today, let's take three to five breaths. Remembering that it takes courage to reconnect to our desires. It takes persistence to keep going the direction we set ourselves up for. And I frequently say, I reserve the right to change my mind. So if you find yourself having a setback, don't give up on yourself, but take the moment to actually develop the awareness to, do I still want to push for it? Come back up. All right, tuck your toes under. Let's take it back to downward facing dog. Right leg in the sky, bend the knee. Open the hip. Lovely. From here, release both knees down to the floor. 
take a hero pose shift your weight to the right side take your left leg nice and long in front of you you might need a block for this right underneath your left hip what I want you to do is take that right foot outside your right glute if this hurts your knee please back it off bring both legs in front of you otherwise reach your arms up lengthen as you exhale fold forward we're doing a lot of forward folding in this practice to develop humility to take a moment to really calm down our nerves calm down our frustrations One more breath. Fantastic, come back up. Shift your weight to the left side to really safely unravel that right knee. Now from here, take your feet to one direction. I don't mind which side you'll choose and find yourself in downward facing dog. Let's try this on the other side. Left leg lifts up. Bend the knee, open the hip. Really juicy stretch. One more, in and out. And then bring the left knee to the left wrist. Pigeon. Take that left foot to the right side of the mat. Walk that right knee further back. And as you come here, settle your hips nice and low. Now for some of you I've seen in practice, you like to put a block underneath your hip that's bend that's stretching i would encourage you today to take that block if you are using it and put it underneath the straight legs thigh just here and then see if you can walk your hands forward i find it just helps me opening more it helps me to still enjoy that stretch in that left performance Taking time to reconnect, time to revisit, but also time to reevaluate. If you set yourself up for something, know that you can change your mind, but also know that a setback is not a failure. A setback lends itself to actually take a moment and think, is this still something I want to pursue? And if so, how can I get there? And if my previous approaches didn't work, why didn't they work? What can I do differently to get different results? Fantastic. Let's come back. Downward facing dog. Hands down. Tuck the back toes, one-legged dog, open the knee, I mean, open the hip, bend the knee, and then release. Hero pose, very briefly, knees down, sit back, lean to the left, take the right leg forward, and then take that left heel outside the left glute. Nice, you might want to need to, you might want to move that left calf slightly out of the way. All right, option again to put that block or a towel or anything underneath that right hip. As you exhale, bend over that right leg. It is a well-known principle in yoga practice that it's always easier to fold over one leg than it is over two legs. So if you do a normal Paschimottanasana forward fold, it's harder because both legs are pulling you back. If you do a Janusha Shasana, it tends to be easier. And I would normally agree with this principle until I do Kriyan Mukai Ekapada Pashimottanasana. Then all of a sudden I feel like I still have a long way to go to gain comfort in this place. Come back up. Lean into the right to take that left leg out. Fantastic. Lay down on your back. Bring the soles of the feet to the floor. Take a moment to find your breath. Bring the feet as wide as the mat, knees together. And when you wipe your feet from side to side. This should feel really good. It should feel playful, if anything. 
Next time your knees go to the right, allow them to stay there for a moment. You can open your hands to a T or a goal post. And if it's something that you would like to try, you can bring the right foot to the top of the left thigh to enhance the stretch through the left quad. The legs have worked really hard today. So to take the moment to really stretch the thigh should allow you to find a little more comfort. Fantastic. You can stay here for a few more breaths if you fancy. Otherwise, we're just gonna slide that right foot up of the thigh, bring the knees up, and take your knees to the left. Take your gaze to the right, bring that left foot to the top of the right thigh. It's optional. See if you can really elongate your inhales and exhales in here. And if your mind is still stuck on either of the arm balancing practice or the one leg balancing aspect of the practice we've taken, I want to remind you that yoga is not to be entertained as a collection of poses. And yes, it's good to push ourselves, but yoga is a practice of showing up. So see if you can let it go. It was in the past, whether you liked it or whether you hated it, it's in the past. For now, just let yourself be. Slide the left foot off of the right knee, bring your knees up to the sky. For your final resting pose, I'm gonna invite you to take Shavasana. Maybe legs up the wall could really work here as your legs really have worked quite hard. Take a moment as long as you have. Know that I thank you for being here with me. It's really good to practice with you. Thank you for allowing me to share my thoughts and my practice with you today. Whatever you do, have a fantastic rest of the day. If you enjoy the class, please share it. And if you didn't, please share it as others might actually love it. Thank you once again. Namaste.